as Jerry mentioned a moment ago, we're going to be in some ways on that mountain, Mount Nebo, right before God takes Moses up to heaven. He dies and then resurrects him and takes him. And there's some words that Moses shares. And it's during this time of year that as, as a community and as a world, we really take some time for reflection. I did it this week, you probably did it as well, that you sat down and thought about some of the things that you've encountered this year. Maybe it was the birth of a new son or daughter or grandbaby, or we experienced that this year. Let me tell you, Christmas with a two-month-old is just, ah, he's got a little pillow that we like sit him on underneath the Christmas tree with the lights on, and he's good for a solid like half hour. Just, wow, look at all these lights, right? Other memories, not so fun. Maybe you've lost somebody. Maybe there's someone that's supposed to be sitting next to you today that's not, whether by death or by broken relationship. But it's around this time of year, in between Christmas and New Year's, that we collectively kind of take this deep breath and look back at what this year had for us and look forward to what the next year does. And today is, uh, we're especially reminded of that being December 31, the last day and the last Sabbath of 2022. And Moses comes down from a mountain having gotten some instructions from God. And he wants to share these with the children of Israel. And the book of Deuteronomy is really these last words from Moses. Deuteronomy is a wonderful book because it it encapsulates the core of what Moses and God want the children of Israel to know right before they head into the promised land. They're heading into a new era of life. And Moses has some instructions for them. We might call them resolutions. If uh, we were, uh, if he was living today, uh, and unfortunately, just like resolutions, they didn't keep them uh, very well, just in the same way that we don't keep them very much. We'll check back in next week and see how your resolutions are going. Moses takes them through a history. He talks to them about leading them out of Egypt, at an exodus through the, the wilderness into the promised land, talks about instructions given to them. And he starts with these words, or we're kind of jumping in midstream, we'll be all over the place, Deuteronomy 4 and 6 today, but Deuteronomy 4 verses 7 through 9, he tells them this, for what great nation has a God as near to them as the Lord our God is near to us whenever we call on him? And what great nation has, ha, has decrees and regulations as righteous and fair as this body of uh, instructions that I'm giving you today? But watch out, be careful never to forget what you yourselves have seen. Don't let these memories escape your mind as long as you live and be sure to pass them on to your children and to your grandchildren. In Moses' last words to the children of Israel, what he does is this. He says, what other nation has a God who is immediately present with his people? Other nations serve other gods that you have to go to the hills, the valleys, or someplace in between, offer these weird, crazy sacrifices, and then maybe if you prayed hard enough and offered the right sacrifice, that God would show up. What other nation has a God as near to it as does the children of Israel? God is near and present with them. And he says also, I've been giving you a lot of instructions, but what other nation has a code of Uh, of work and of ethic and of response to life better than the children of Israel. That we have a way of living that's completely different than the other nations. Yeah, it's kind of weird sometimes, but it's been working out thus far. He says, but watch out. There's comfort in knowing that God is close and comfort in having in rules and regulations, but be careful never to forget what you yourself have seen. I was talking to someone right before first service this morning and they were, we were kind of, you know, reminiscing and they've got a few more years than I do and a little bit more wisdom than I do. And they were talking about looking back over their life as they, as they, as they have accomplished a milestone this year in their age. They say, I can look back over my life and see the ways that God has led. The different paths that I've taken where the road would go into two options, a fork in the road and I would choose one or choose the other. And I would soon realize that that path that I chose was the right one or it was the wrong one. But always there were paths that God had laid before me where I could see him leading and working in my life. And I imagine you have those paths as well. Moses says, be careful. Never forget what you have seen and heard. Don't let the memories escape you. 
Whatever you've gone through this year, the good and the bad, whatever God has been a part of, whatever you've laid your hands to, don't let, don't forget it. Don't let the memories escape. Because when we forget where we've come from, it becomes increasingly difficult to know where we're going. And I thought this morning to share some memories with you about what's happened in our forever family. And I'm going to do that by way of numbers, okay? Now, before we get lost in numbers and you're like, oh great, it's the last Sabbath of the year. Here's a long sermon about an offering appeal. You should have seen the look in the first service's eyes when I started listing off numbers. Numbers tell stories. And I'm more interested this morning in, I guess it's afternoon now. I'm more interested this afternoon in the stories behind these numbers than the numbers themselves. They serve a purpose. The first number I'd like to put up, 2,300. That's the amount of volunteer hours we've invested in our food bank this year. 2,300 hours invested in our food bank. 2,700 is the number of families that we've touched through our food bank. If you add up everybody that's come through the, through the entire year, 2,700. It's a lot of families. Multiply that out into individuals. It's almost 9,000 individuals that have been touched by our food bank this year. It's incredible. 2,500 is the number of uh, kids eat free food bags that we have passed on to the Keene Independent School District that we collect. You heard that we're going to be starting that back up with the new school year. That's you. And 1,400, number of water bottles that were distributed this summer in our homeless ministry, and 150 were the items of winter clothing that were donated this fall. It says a lot about our community. It says a lot that we're invested in those around us. It's not just about ourselves, but it's about those in our community, and we're seeking to serve them. I really like this number. One, it's the number of gymnasiums that Keene Avenue Elementary School has completed this year. Amen, right? That is a nice number, and we can praise God for that. Yeah, we can clap for that one. Many, many of you celebrated the opening of that gymnasium. I was in a hospital with my wife, welcoming our son into the world. And so I looked at the pictures and we enjoyed that. But that's a testament to the faithfulness of this community, a dream that started many years ago, and one that somebody put some money down in 2015 and said, hey, this needs to be something for our kids. And that tells the story of a community that's invested in our children, giving them place to play and to recess and to learn about themselves and about others. $10,670.78, amount of money that was donated this year to the lowest Microsoft Family Crisis Fund, going to families in need in our elementary school. And I believe, what's the, the next one? CTA Worthy Student Fund, 54000 That's the number of dollars gone to worthy students for our academy. This is a community invested in Christian education. And there's all sorts of different numbers and other things that we could add in and we could go through a whole list of numbers for our schools. But Christian education is so important. And you as a community this year said, it's important. It's important. We're going to put our money behind it. $27,794.09, the amount our community put towards Ukrainian relief this year. We've been praying for Ukraine this year, and we've been putting our money where our mouth is, probably but a drop in the bucket of what the need is, but it's what we bring, and God is able to multiply that. 1.2 million number in local donations given as of Wednesday. Jose, thank you for that number. This is you investing in our local ministries, church ministries and operations, and any other line that you designate towards. This is money that's actuated right here in our community. And 3.3 million it's dollars and tithe that goes towards the salaries of the pastors that work here in this community and also to a cadre of other pastors and ministries that are funded through the Texas Conference. That's incredible. All of the, the, the donations, if we add it up, it's almost $5 million that comes across Jose's desk. And I'm very, very thankful we have Jose as a treasurer because that's an incredible testament to who God is and what he's doing in this community. These numbers... Yeah, you know, it could be 5 million, it could be 10 million, it could be 250,000, whatever it is. It's our community coming together and saying, we have this resource and we want to see ministry happen. And it's thanks to you. 130, it's a number of kids we have about every week in our children's Sabbath schools. 879, that's the number of verses our Pathfinders memorized this year in our Pathfinder Bible experience. Yeah, let's give it up for them. How many verses did you memorize this year? I'll look down now. It's okay. It's okay. 27,600. That's the number of streaming hours that people from around the world have watched of our online content between our worship services and our programs that we put on everything. That's you at home watching right now. 
amazing how many hours of content people are watching of our services here. And I was looking at the list. Our services go to almost, or just over 20 countries, different places people are watching from. 150,000, that's the number of content views we've had this year on our social media platforms. That's a lot of good, good news going to a lot of people in need of something good in their lives. 219, that's the number of songs we've sung this year across three worship services. Add up four today, maybe make it 222. And uh, 12, it's the number of times Blessed Assurance was sung this year. The, the most sung song across all of our worship services was Blessed Assurance. We sang it this morning. We'll make it 13. We'll sing it tonight for communion. Make it 14, right? We'll just, good, good father, I think was a close second at eight, right? I really like this number. This one's hot off the press. 10,597. This was Bible school letters received through December. Did you know that we have one of the largest bi- prison ministry Bible schools in the North American division? This is how many letters they received from inmates this year through Bible studies, through reaching out. We've sent them Bibles. We have many of you that are part of our Bible school that show up faithfully. I was just talking with Virginia earlier this week. She's so thankful for the faithful volunteers that show up. This is you. And each of these letters gets a handwritten response back to them. It's incredible to see what God is doing. 50, that's the number of prayer shawls given in this community this year. 31 prayer shawls and 19 baby dedication shawls, including the one that we gave to Faith this morning. And that number is cool, but it's even more interesting to think about that's 50 people that have been prayed for extensively this year. As those prayer shawls are knitted, we don't know who they're going to, but they're, the, the person that they are going to is prayed over. So if you have been a recipient of that this year, whether in transition or uh, uh, baby dedication or something, know that you have been prayed for. And each of those individuals has a story to tell about the goodness of God in their life. 7,800, approximate number of cups of coffee and tea that we served this year. 15,000, approximate number of breakfast treats that have been given and consumed this year. That's a lot. But what it tells the story of is connection. That we're come together as a forever family on a Sabbath morning and enjoy something good for our bodies as well as good for our souls. And it's transforming our community. Before we go to the last two, had a number slipped to me uh, in between services. 72,575 total money is given towards our kitchen project this year. About 11,000 so far in our Christmas tree project. You believe in fellowship and we're thankful. Last number updated in first service this morning, 26 number of baptisms we've had this year. That number could be one, it could be zero, it could be a hundred. I'll praise God either way because what this number means is that lives have been touched. Whatever the number is, one is worth it. Whatever, whoever that person might be. And this number of baptisms, baptisms means our community believes in discipleship and what God is doing in the individual lives of people. Last number, the gymnasium stole its number, but one big thank you to the forever family from myself and the pastoral staff, the ministry leaders and the church board. We appreciate you for everything you've done this year in ministry in this community. You could give yourselves a hand. This would be the appropriate time to do that. As we head into 2023, don't forget what you've seen and heard. There's a myriad of numbers that we could have put up on the screen and they mean all sorts of different things and we could whine and complain that we don't have enough for this, we don't have enough for that. Whatever God brings to the table is enough because he's gonna multiply it. Don't forget what you've seen and heard this year. Whatever ministry you've been a part of, whatever you've given to is a story and a testament of God working in your life and in the life of our community. Don't forget what you've seen and heard. It was Moses' instructions to God's people and it's instructions to us today. He continues on detailing their escape from Egypt and how God had led them, how he's a personal God. He's a jealous God. He's a God of love and a God of relationship. And he tells them this in Deuteronomy 4, verses 22 and 23. I will die in this land. Moses was not able to see the promised land. He was able to lead them up to the edge and he would die before he entered. He said, I will not cross the Jordan, but you are about to cross over and take possession of that good land. 
Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you. Do not make yourselves an idol in the form of anything the Lord your God has forbidden. What God is after is relationship. And Moses represented that relationship for God's people. But Moses was about to die, which meant the representative of that relationship was to die also. Have you ever had a time in your life where the person who represented your spiritual life, a mentor, a parent, a person that you would turn to that set the tenor and the environment for your spiritual life, they passed or they moved away or you moved away? I remember for me that came when I moved to here to Southwestern, nobody died. It was just that I moved into the dorm and my parents were living in New Mexico. And all of a sudden I moved out of the, envi- the spiritual environment that my parents had made for me and had fostered for me. And in a lot of ways I'd grown to depend on that personally. But as a freshman here at Southwestern Adventist University, that all changed. If I were to have a spiritual life, it would be up to me. Because Dean Iverson sure wasn't going to come in my room and make sure I read my Bible before bed every night. And I would worry sometimes if he did. It was going to be up to me. I was going to have to be the one to own it and say, God's after a relationship. And will I seek him as much as he has sought me? Moses tells the people, don't forget the covenant. God is a God of covenant relationship. He's the one that made a promise to Israel and is keeping that today, even though you and I are not Israelites. We are grafted into the covenant because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we can say amen because of that. God is desirous of relationship. And in between this passage and the one we're about to look at, Moses details again the 10 commandments. Deuteronomy chapter five, we know them from Exodus 20 goes down through again, the top 10. And we can look at that list and we can see it as a list of do's and don'ts and things that we have to obey or else. But we miss the reading of scripture completely if we do not see in the 10 commandments the heart and the character of Jesus Christ himself. When God laid out the 10 commandments for his people, he was articulating a view and a window into his soul that was compared to nothing else. He says, this is what I am all about. And that list points towards a relationship. And if you're doing it any other way, you will be increasingly frustrated. Do not forget the covenant. Lastly, Moses tells God's people in Deuteronomy 6, verses 10 through 12. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, Houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget what? The Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Moses says there's going to be a time where you're going to be sitting pretty. You're going to inherit a a bunch of stuff that you did not work for. Nothing that you did came about because of anything you did, but because of everything God did. And you're going to be relaxing, completely satisfied in your mansion in a valley in Canaan. And you will be tempted to forget God, the very same God that gave you those blessings in the first place. Be careful when you enter into the land, when you receive the promise of God, that thing that you've been praying about that you have received, be careful that you don't fall back into the place We're like, ah, I got this myself. This is all good. Everything's all right. Moses says, no, don't forget the Lord. Don't forget the Lord. Because he's the very one who brought you into this land to begin with. Don't forget the Lord. We're headed into a new year, 2023. This is the last day. If you wanted to do something in 2022, today is the day to do it. If you haven't done it already, if you're trying to read 120 books this year and got about five in, good luck. It's gonna be, gonna be a long time between now and midnight. You remember when, when you were in, in grade school, maybe you do it now because your job requires it, but you'd write the date, right? And you get about mid-January and you're frustrated because you're continuing to write the year that was previous, right? Get down to the end, you just scrawl it. 1, 12, 2022. 20, ah, I did it again. Scratch, 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 scratch. 2023. 20, we're headed into a new year. One that we're gonna have to adjust to. One that has circumstances in it that we don't even know about. But there is a God who already knows. A God who's looked through history past. The God that walked with you through 2022, he's the same one that's gonna walk with you through 2023. 
I had to think about that because new year, right? 2023. The only thing that we have to fear, Ellen White writes this in Life Sketches, page 196. We have nothing to fear for the future. And if we do, that we forget the way the Lord has led us and his teachings in our past history. The future is open wide before us. God holds the future in his hands. He's called you for such a time as this. And if you're looking forward into this year, maybe you're trying to get out of 2022 with all you've got. Or maybe it's been a good year and you're trying to hold on to it as hard of, as hard as you can. Whatever your future holds in 2023, the only thing you have to fear is that you might forget God and the way that he's led you. So if I may, as Moses did for the children of Israel on that mount several thousand years ago, don't let the memories escape. May you never forget what you have seen and heard this year. May you never forget the covenant, the relationship that God wants to have with you. And above all else, may you never forget the Lord and the way that he has led you this year. Thanks for stopping by. I hope and pray that this message was a blessing for you. If you'd like to see more content like this, we need your help. You can support the Keene Seventh Adventist Church Media Ministry by going to AdventistGiving.org, finding the Keene Seventh Adventist Church in Texas, and then putting in your donation to the media line. Your faithful giving and support allows us to spread the gospel online for you and others to participate in. Thank you for your continued support of the Keene Seventh Adventist Church. Thank you so much for joining us today in worship. We're glad that you are a part of the Forever family wherever you're watching from. And we're pretty excited because around here, it takes a village to make sure that you can participate in worship. Our team of volunteers works tirelessly week in and week out to plan what you see on stage and what goes on behind the scenes to make sure that it makes it to your phone, your living room, or wherever you're watching from. Today, we need your help. We can only do this because of the generous support of the Forever family. So if you'd like to continue to see the live stream ministry of the Keene Seventh Adventist Church grow, we invite you to give to media right here at the Keene Seventh Adventist Church. You can do this by following the link on your screen, going to AdventistGiving.org and clicking on the Keene Seventh Adventist Church in Texas. Thank you for your support. Thanks for stopping by. We hope and pray that you enjoyed this production from the Keene Seventh-day Adventist Church. You can help us out in one of two ways. You can click like, share, and share this piece on your social media feed, or you can give to the media ministry of the Keene Seventh-day Adventist Church. To do so, head on over to AdventistGiving.org, find the Keene Church in Texas, and slot your donation into the media line. Thank you for your continued support as we share the good news to the world. Thank you.